Uh, he is a blogger for WNYC's Transportation Nation. Um, and he has recently written a book called um, Interstate 69. Uh, he's a journalist. He was the illustrations editor for The New Yorker, which is kind of like, you know, when you're eight years old and you're filling out your dream job, that's one of the nerdy dream jobs you would want to do. Um, so I think that's pretty cool. Um, so come on up. We're excited to hear what you have to say. And I left it all. I left it all. I'm going to break the notes barrier. Um, speaking of streets, <laughs> Interstate 69, I wrote this book, uh, The Unfinished History of the Last Great American Highway, it's called. Um, I was drawn to the human drama of the people trying to build it, the people trying to stop it, the places it would change forever. And it turned out that all of this was governed by a policy drama that I had to understand and learn all about, which I'll talk about both the human and the policy drama. Uh, far away from New York, but still relevant, uh, any, the proposed Interstate 69 will go from Indianapolis south to Mexico through Memphis, Houston, the Mississippi Delta, um, the Rio Grande Valley. It's 1,400 miles long, um, and it, the existing piece goes to Canada, so this was dubbed the NAFTA Highway. Very few pieces are, few pieces are built, but many are under construction. It was one of um, some highways carved out of the 1991 Ice-T Bill, which uh, more or less supposedly ended the interstate system. Uh, funding, but at the same time it said there's a couple important roads we need to keep paying attention to. A lot of them were existing highways, I-69 was the biggest of the brand new ones. How do you get a road like that moving? Well, politics. Um, in the mid-90s the president was from an I-69 state of Arkansas, the vice president was from Tennessee, Tom DeLay was from Texas, and Trent Lott was from Mississippi. Trent Lott famously told the I-69 group if it doesn't go through Mississippi, it's not going to be built, and here he is cutting a ribbon outside Tunica, Mississippi. 2006. Um, people like the Thomas and Sandra Tokarski here on the left in Indiana have been trying to say for 20 years that this is a waste of money, it's environmentally destructive, the age of the interstates are over, and it's not going to create the jobs that politicians think it might. Um, they've been making this case very politely, they've been filing lawsuits, but they've been writing letters to the editor, trying to work within the system. In the last five years, um, a more kind of anarchist um, civil disobedience element came into play in Bloomington. These are some kids who, uh, they vandalized some offices, they chained themselves to uh, equipment, and they did tree sits and things like that. This is a torch-lit march through the streets of a college town. In uh, Texas, Rick Perry's Trans-Texas Corridor, maybe you've heard of this, it was a statewide plan to build these ginormous uh, toll interstates that were gonna be privately owned, and this caused a great deal of uh, upheaval, the beginnings of the Tea Party, I think. Um, in Texas among ranchers and rural folk who thought that this was overreached by government. So who wants Interstate 69? Little towns like Haynesville, Arkansas, where I-69, you can't see it. It's, it's in the middle of that mural. It's so important that it's the center of their town mural, even though it may never be built. Um, these towns have seen manufacturing and agricultural jobs go away. They think this highway is going to bring more of them uh, and save them. And a lot of white dudes have been involved in uh, building Interstate 69. The one on the right, uh, David Graham, actually single-handedly created it, basically. It was in his kitchen in 1990 that an economist said, you want to build this road through Indiana, it's never going to happen. Make it national and you'll have a shot. And David Graham drove in his car up and down what became the route of I-69, cold calling chambers of commerce, and he made it happen. This is the groundbreaking in Indiana a couple years ago. Um, because of the anarchists, they had to do it indoors. They brought this dirt from the construction site. And they were snipers on the roof, and they, they dug in in the convention center. Um, there's Mitch Daniels, who funded this whole thing by selling the Indiana Toll Road to a Spanish-Australian consortium. It's very strange to see a brand new highway in this day and age. Uh, when I came to this ribbon cutting, it felt like I was transported back to 1956. Um, and of course, there's a huge debate happening right now about whether we need to be building more highways, whether maybe there aren't other things to build. Um, so what do we build? How do we pay for it? How do we decide? There are, you know, biking things to build. Um, this is all obvious to you, you're New Yorkers, but uh, in other places in the country, a thing like a sidewalk or a bike lane is an almost radical notion. And there's a finite amount of money and there's very complicated politics governing how we spend this money. Once upon a time, biking and, and driving got along. This guy, Carl Fisher, raced and sold bikes and cars. He also invented the Indianapolis 500, and he was the uh, father of the Lincoln Highway. His idea for paying for the Lincoln Highway, the first coast-to-coast -coast paved road, 
was to toll, uh, basically take profits from the uh, car companies. They were going to profit from it. They should share in the building of it. Uh, when it came time for the government to build roads um, in 1917, the first Federal Aid Highway Act, this man here, Thomas McDonald, has more to do with the way transportation is funded today than anyone else. Um, FDR thought we should build tolls and do something akin to tax increment financing. This guy said, no, it's, it's a public good. It should come from the general fund. It should be taxed, not tolled. These guys are the ones who invented the Highway Trust Fund. Um, that's Al Gore's dad there on the left. Um, and they basically came up with this way in 1956 when Eisenhower said, you know, hey, maybe we should toll the interstates. They said, let's pay for it with taxes. Um, the, and they created the Highway Trust Fund that collects all the gas taxes and spits out transportation money. Uh, but not enough lately. So cars are more efficient. Um, the gas tax is pennies to the gallon, not pegged to the cost of gas. And uh, this chart should scare everybody because this is the money that uh, provides not just road maintenance and building of new roads, but also our transit, a lot of transit money and a lot of uh, a sliver of it goes to bike and pedestrian money. So today there's a big conversation in Washington. This is the Republican head of the uh, Transportation Committee. He thinks we should just spend what the gas tax money brings in and, and not raise the gas tax. We need to cut spending, uh, basically download this problem to the states and we should do away with the Republicans believe a lot of the bike and ped funding that we have. Obama, on the other hand, wants to build high-speed rail, wants to build more transit, and wants to quit building um, what he gently calls boondoggle highways, um, and uh, thinks it'll create a lot of jobs that we need very desperately. This conversation is, of course, being played out in very small theaters, in, in meeting rooms all across the country, and this is the Metropolitan Police Organization in Bloomington, Indiana, where I sat and listened to that man from the Indiana Department of Transportation tell the Bloomington MPO that the state would take away their money for their bike and running trail if they didn't build I-69, which they didn't want to do. And so the laws we have about who gets to decide on projects and everything, uh, it, it plays out in very small places. But I-69 is kind of a, a front, a big wide front in the war over transportation, uh, and we're at a turning point. So. Uh, that's six minutes and 40 seconds. You should probably buy the book, Interstate 69, <laughs> The Unfinished History of the Last Great American Highway.